Hey, welcome back. So we need to finish get the rest of our capacitors in this project. Let's go ahead and do that. So first step is to get the manufacturer part number. Then the next step is to go into your LTM design project, use the manufacturer part search from panels, manufacturer part search. This is the easiest way. Then put in the manufacturer part number and then you would right click and save this to my workspace. Now, I think I already have this component in my workspace. So if I were to go to panels and components, this components is where I would be looking for whether I have these in my workspace or not. Uh, I do not. So that's an interesting thing. What you can do is copy and paste a manufacturer part number into your Altium 365 environment. And this includes your local libraries as well, right? Okay. Uh, and if you don't have it, you can then switch back to manufacturer part search to search for it. And then we'll find it for you. Very easy, seamless integration into like the component uh, component capture and library process, like doing this manually and syncing it up and all that stuff locally with local files is just a pain. Um, and this needs to be kind of the new standard. So I'm going to save this to my workspace and click capacitors. Um, I don't really know any systems that are this easy. So let's go ahead dielectric material, click OK. And if you don't have the luxury of using Altium 365's manufacturer search workspace and whatnot, that's fine. You can check out my other video where I show you how to download the components to from your um, from like Octopart and Ultra Librarian. And there's snap, uh, there's a snap EDA as well as an option. Okay. So now that this is loaded, I'm going to rename this. What you do is you'd rename your man, your capacitor from the manufacturer part number to whatever you want. The ID would be whatever you decide for your company. Um, and then I can also add links and data sheets and specific parameters to this and also additional supply chain options or, you know, uh, uh, alternate component part numbers. So let's, you know, if you wanted to add an alternate, you can click add, right? And then now it's searching for alternative options. Let's say you're like, you know, we want something that's healthier, more trustworthy as a backup. Kemet, something from Kemet, we can go here, select that, you know, scroll down, see what's available. And then you can even click on here and then Octopart will pull up the chip and then redirect you to the device. Then you can go into the data sheet, look for specifics about it. And then, you know, just from the tool. So let's go ahead and click OK to add that as an additional option. Okay. And then what do you do? You just right click, save it, and then save it to server. All your data sheets, they get added to that. I mean, this is too easy. So new capacitor, right? And then you can add the manufacturer part number and click OK. Now I'm going to drag my um, I'm going to drag my window over to my other monitor just to make life a little bit easier. Okay, great. Next we have C14. So C14 is here and actually maybe I'll keep it over here so you can, we can check this, this off and you can keep pace. So let's go ahead and, you know, repeat the same process. This is right. You go to panels, manufacturer part search, or I can just go straight to components, look for this not in my library, found two components that have it in the manufacturer parts. Now I'm going to go with maybe the green option, but is that safe? We have to see whether the specs are exactly the same or close enough. This one is a 6.3 volt, a 20% tolerance. That's kind of wide, kind of wide. Let's look, let's look at what else is going on here. 6% tolerance is maybe a little more, more expensive, uh, but see it's not in stock. Yeah. All right, not the best set of options. And I don't know if this is available or not. So this is another thing you have to learn to, you have to know how to do research on the components. Sometimes it'll take you to a link that just talks about the components. You have to do a little bit of digging to see if it's available. I'm going to go ahead and save this to my workspace anyway, for sake of um, you know, just for the sake of the, the lab to get through the material. But in, in practicality, for all practical purposes, you want to select an alternate capacitor. Let's see that you can actually find. And you would do that using, say, Octopart to find capacitors with similar specifications. So for instance, if I go to Octopart, right, and then I look for this component. Okay, so this is in stock from LKR WinSource. All right, all right, cool. And what I love about um, Altium is that it has a active bomb to verify that you can actually get those components, but we'll get to that later. Okay. What do I want to change here? So I would copy this name. All right. Control all and paste. Copy that name. Now see here, 
this is not available. So let's go ahead and click add because we need to start, we need to add some options here. So this, this is how you can add options for components that you want to have in your inventory. They don't show up online, but maybe you have some locally or you can get them from some, you know, back of the alley <laughs> source. All right. So now you're going to right click save and don't forget to save to server. See, now we have an alternate available component part number available. So I'm saying I have this component it may not be in stock or it might it's fluctuates or something like that, but I added another part to this. I added another one to it. You know, it would have been a good idea to add the manufacturer, the second uh, part choice from the router here, but that's okay. I'm just going to wait for it to commit to the cloud here and voila, it's in. Let's go to panels, components, and double check that this is in our library. And it's sure enough, it is in the LTF365 environment and it is 22 microfarad, right? Okay. So looks like that's done. I'm going to, all right. So that's not, yeah, there we go. Check mark this. And that's finished. Okay, we have two more capacitors to do. And on, I will we'll just get them done. So let's repeat this process. Not in the library. Manufacturer part search. Okay. We're going to right click and add this, save this to the workspace. Put it under capacitors. Then in this window, we'll make sure, you know, our information is all in here. What about height? I know height is a common important one. And then we want voltage rated DC voltage, 10 volts. Okay, good. Okay. So it's pulled up our component information. So much information here. It has the alternate footprints. I can even set one, um, and select this model and then do different things with it. Like having managed content, my components, see which projects are in there. I mean, it's just the sky's the limit really. You can edit the pin mapping too, right? And then you can choose to set something as the default. Like if you want a smaller footprint or a larger one by default, I'll go with the existing default over here and then copy this name for the capacitor. I can add alternates, you know, as or additional options here, but I won't do that since this, it seems to be in stock. So I'm going to right click, save that and then save to server new capacitor, right? Click OK. Okay, you know, this is kind of a, a bit of a tedious process, right? Well, it would be super tedious without Altium, the 365 environment, like seriously. Um, I know while at Intel, I used Design Sync, and I, I don't want to imagine what the librarians have to go through using ORCAD PCB editor and other software, quite like seriously. Okay, so. If you can get a job where they use Altium uh, at that's entry level, try to go with that. Okay. Because once you get to the more junior and senior levels, you, you're going to have a, and you know, at a bigger company, you're going to have a bigger, you're going to have a team that's dedicated to doing these, unless you just really enjoy making components, right? Which is, you know, more power to you if that's what you're into, but that's not really my thing. Okay. So. This is why we search each time to see if we already have the component, the manufacturer, and we do. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, but hmm, I'm not so sure. So I added this already cap ceramic 47 microfarad 10 volt. Let me see here. Yeah, I have added this before. So it may have been from a different project when I've just reused this component, but this is done. And then finally we have this last capacitor, right? So let's go ahead and search for it. Doesn't exist. There's only one component in here that was found from TDK. I will add this, save this to my workspace. See this icon here where it shows you it's in green. That means it's available as a library component. You can add to your workspace that has a, at least a schematic symbol. Then I'll add height and then anything else we want to add here. No, it's fine. Click OK. Right. So now that we have this going, I'll go ahead and, you know, for the name, I think I'm going to just, I think I'll just uh, copy this name here, paste the name, right click save, and then save my component to the server. New capacitor is what we'll say in the comment for this, and then click OK. This is a 0201 capacitor. Now, why do we use smaller capacitors? Uh, package size. 
Well, for multiple reasons. One, it's to have a smaller PCB footprint, smaller printed circuit board. But also, did you know that this is also related to signal integrity? So if you're not up on signal integrity and the nuances and, and details of signal integrity, you want to check out why use smaller capacitors for signal integrity purposes. And the answer comes down to in inductance. That's that's a hint. Okay, so all of our all of our capacitors are finished. So I'm gonna slide my list here, check this off, and next up will be um, our other components. This is the process you go through. Man, if you're doing this manually, this would have taken at least an hour or at least, you know, two, maybe one or two hours for the capacitors alone. You'd have local files, you'd have to mix and match them, see what you can save or salvage. I mean, it would have just been a drag. Okay. So this, this is just too easy.